COVID started December, ultimately December of 19, and then I think it really hit the US uh, around probably March of 2020. So, I mean, it's been around over three, three and a half years now, but, you know, we're still seeing a lot of problems and ramifications kind of from those long hauler type patients that still have problems with COVID. Long haulers is kind of a broad term and it's evolved over the years and now it may not even be one single disease, you know, it may be a spectrum of disorders, but what it really constitutes is symptoms that have been ongoing that have stemmed from that acute COVID infection. Even though the infection's resolved, there's kind of a series of symptoms that persist in a lot of people. Yeah, it's a good question. Some people, you know, have had what we call other comorbidities that may set them up for kind of that long haulers COVID and certain symptoms, but other people haven't. You know, we can see this long hauler syndrome in, you know, previously healthy, fit people. So that's where you kind of get this spectrum of, of disease. Yeah, it's a good question. I think we're still learning how many people are really affected by it because some people may have certain symptoms and they don't even recognize it's from COVID or, or they even that they have long haulers. I evaluate people who want their immune systems checked you know, regularly. And some of them have been on certain social media pages and kind of been made aware that they may have long haulers, but other people aren't even aware. They just come in with these complex symptoms. And as we kind of do our tests and run an evaluation and get their history, we're kind of identifying, oh, wow, you, you know, this is, you can kind of put a time slot on when they had COVID and then when things kind of worsened, you know, maybe even months after that. Well, first of all, we kind of have to really see what their symptom set is and perhaps what their laboratory work looks like because every one of them may have some common symptoms, but there's differences. One of the things that I've kind of seen in a lot of patients is maybe three broad categories, and they can even be overlapping, where people may have some sort of complex inflammation, kind of chronic inflammation, or they may have something called dysautonomia. That means part of their nervous system is affected. And then the other part that I'm seeing a lot of is reactivation of previous viruses that people had. And they're getting a lot of fatigue and, and different, even brain fog from the reactivation of previous viruses. Yeah, the most common symptoms that I will see in people are just outstanding chronic fatigue, sometimes brain fog. They may have heart rhythm problems. They may have kind of nervous system problems. They may shake at certain times. They may have joint pain, stomach issues, gut health issues. So I'm seeing a whole spectrum of things that people are just trying to live with, but they're also trying to figure it out. Like, how do we fix this? Yeah, I mean, I think overall the vaccine had its place, you know, worked. We're seeing long haulers in both people, in both vaccinated and unvaccinated. In terms of treatment, that's kind of to be determined. I mean, first of all, what I like to do is just do a really thorough history, get a thorough evaluation of their immune system, and really try and hone in on certain targets if we can, if we can identify those targets and tailor and individualize the treatment to the patient and there's certain times that we can really target and hone in on certain things with patients. And there's other times where, you know, we are left kind of looking at each other saying, we're gonna walk this journey together, we're gonna learn together, and we're gonna try and do our best. Yeah, it's new. It's new and it's evolving. And one thing that's unique is, you know, medicine does evolve over time. You know, how we practice evolves over time. And most people, are kind of with other disorders, they're kind of the product of years and years and years and years of research and evolution of how we are able to diagnose and treat. This is something that's happening before our eyes and we live in a very real time society. And so sometimes it's difficult to really come to terms with, hold on, we're still learning <laughs> and, and it's evolving. And even my approach over the last 
three years to patients has changed. I mean, what, what I do today is very different than how I think about it even three years ago. I think the best way is just contact Tanner Clinic, ask for my office, happy to take a look and evaluate. Again, there's a series of pretty sophisticated tests that we're able to run to try and hone in on certain things with people that perhaps other people aren't looking at.